Creating a painting like my piece titled Rain was similar to building a house. At times it certainly felt like it. In the beginning there was a lot of construction and prep. You can see I even made a movable set that duplicated a corner of my studio. I had to establish a comfortable viewing distance from my still life. Then I placed a string grid between me and my subject and began with my first of many grid drawings. I find if I make even a small mistake at this point, it will only be magnified later on. I move on to a small painting which will help me determine what my larger work will look like. It's kind of like a road map. I spend a fair amount of time moving close up and far back, checking and rechecking the color and tone and how the light falls on my subject. I find that my favorite light of the day is around 11 a.m., so I do my best to capture this on a small scale, then color match to my larger painting, hoping to transfer this morning light feeling. You can see I have my art books flopped open, scattered around. I reference them constantly for inspiration. I'm a real art history buff. I wear a headset a lot so I can talk to friends and gallery owners while I work. And yes, that's a heating pad around my neck, which relieves strain on my shoulders. In a moment, I'll pull out my string grid for one last check to help establish the size of my canvas. I'll do this on my studio floor with string and tape. It ends up being roughly seven by six feet. I'll call my framer and he'll start my canvas prep while I finish my last drawings. Overnight, with the help of my son and his friends, we lifted the whole set several feet higher. This helps me see the details under the table. Now things start to get exciting. I began this project in early January, and it's now mid-March. The canvas will arrive soon, and will need to be prepped and layered with numerous coats of gesso. This primes the canvas for painting. You can see my kids helping me out with light sanding in between coats. I enjoy their company in the studio. After some adjustments to the armature that supports the back of my canvas, I can finally mount it to my motorized easel. The next step is to transfer the image to the canvas. I do this by tracing the outlines established in my large pre-study work, then transfer them to the prep surface. I outline my traced lines with black painted line and I'm ready to begin. I start with an underpainting which is basically thin veils of brightly colored paint applied like watercolor to the surface of the canvas. My ultimate goal at this point is to get all the white out so I can see the values correctly. It might appear to be close to finish in its underpainting stage, but in fact, this project has only just begun. I have many months ahead and important decisions still to make. I have mounted white strips of paper as a border around the edge of my piece. This helps me better understand the values I am working with, so I don't get confused by the shadows and objects behind my canvas. These white strips will remain, framing my image right up to the end. I like to keep my studio open to my family and friends. My dog Petunia keeps me company a lot and loves to sleep on the heater right by my feet when it's cold. I have to be careful not to roll over her tail. I watch Netflix on my computer and listen to books on tape. I even have students and people with funny hats visit me. I have a motorized easel that can handle large canvases. With the touch of my foot, I can move it quickly up or down and I can get my knees under it comfortably for up close detail work. I had to use about 200 pounds of ballast made up of cannonballs and lead ingots as a counterweight so the painting, which weighs over 100 pounds, wouldn't fall on me. The stick I am using to prop my hand on is called a mall stick. When I paint with my slow drying coats of oil, I want to keep my hands from smudging anything. So I place the ball of the stick on the dry area, then I can rest my painting hand against the stick without messing up the painting. It also keeps my hands steady. As you can see, I have a bank of windows along the north side of my studio as well as skylights overhead. This allows for a pretty consistent light source for my paintings, and I'm lucky living in Colorado to have mostly sunny days. The blue sky outside allows for luminous warm shadows on my still life objects. It's surprising how much variation there is with the light I work with. It all depends on the time of day, season, and of course the weather. My studio faces a courtyard where I take breaks, look at the garden, watch my fish in my pond, and say hi to my turtle. You would be surprised by how many layers of paint go on the surface of my canvas. Some areas I have reworked 20 times or more. 
I had to sand, scrape, and paint over my original lines in order to make necessary changes. With each pass, I discover more and go deeper into the work fully realizing the objects. You'll notice I'm constantly referencing my pre-study painting for color matching. This is one of the things that makes painting from direct observation so challenging. But for all the technical stuff, what appeals to me most is the concept behind the work. The setup for rain sat against the wall in my studio for more than a year. I frequently changed things around trying to figure out the best composition. The piece includes two separate still lifes, one on top of the table and one underneath it. Above you have the traditional classical arrangement being rearranged, so to speak, by arrows raining down. To me, the arrows represent the force of modernism, eclipsing traditional representation. There are aspects of both schools that I embrace and reject. The second still life, taking refuge under the table, displays some iconic objects from my past works. Simply put, this is a humorous take on where I see my work in the context of the ever-changing art world. By creating a work this size, my final intention is for the viewer to have a real-time, real-life encounter. I want them to feel like they can actually walk into the painting. My intention creating this time-lapse was to share with you both my process and daily routine. Thank you for taking the time to watch.